Hello, Hello and, and welcome, welcome back, back to follow. follow. This video is going to be a little different. We wanted to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about who we are, what the channel's about, and what the future holds. First of all, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for your continued support. Without you all tuning in, liking, sharing, subscribing, all the things, we wouldn't have this amazing opportunity. So again, again thank you. Thank you. So, here's a little background and history lesson on me. Before I get started with that, if you're new to the channel, I'm Garrett. I'm Alicia. And I'm Logan. And also joining us today are Lane and Marsha. Hey guys, great to be here. Great to have you along, thanks for joining. I was born in Farmington, New Mexico, which is where we are today. This is Choke Cherry Canyon, also known now as the Glade Run Recreation Area, which is managed by the Bureau of Land Management. I grew up in this canyon and spent the majority of my high school years terrorizing the dirt and rocks in this area. But let's go back a little further. So if you've been watching the channel, you know that recently my father passed away. My dad was instrumental in my passion for all things outdoors, especially four-wheeling. Some of my earliest memories are of me and my brother riding along fearlessly in the back of my dad's yellow 1973 Jeep CJ5. One memory I have which stands out the most is a time we were in La Plata Canyon in southwest Colorado during the winter months. I guess we were trying to see how far up the canyon we could get, but as we started into the first initial steep section, the Jeep broke through the freshly fallen snow and hit a patch of ice, sending us sliding towards the edge, which would have ultimately ended with us in the deep canyon below. We fortunately survived that sketchy situation somehow. Another fun memory is a time we were running the Mount Blanca Trail, which is near Alamosa, Colorado, and the Great Sand Dunes. We were in the same Jeep CJ5 and the transmission mount broke, causing the transmission and the transfer case to start to come out from underneath the Jeep. My dad and other members of the four wheel drive club that were along that day used to come along to secure everything back into place well enough we could get back down off the mountain.
Another time I remember joining the same four-wheel drive club during an Easter Jeep Safari event in Moab, Utah. I don't completely remember the circumstances leading up to it, but for some reason, we took our cat. The cat got loose and we had to chase it down at the rest area near the Hole in the Rock, south of Moab, Utah. My brother and I were still very young and I remember the Easter Bunny coming to the hotel we were staying at on that same trip that year. The Four Wheel Drive Club I mentioned was the Cliffhangers Four Wheel Drive Club out of Farmington, New Mexico, of which my father was one of the founding members. My dad's 1973 Jeep CJ5 was then upgraded to his well-known 1979 full-size Ford Bronco, still in the color yellow. This is the vehicle my father is best known for, as he took it through some amazing places. He loved to lead people into the Hole in the Rock Trail, which is an old Mormon immigrant trail near Lake Powell in southeast Utah. Here he is standing at the top of the actual Hole in the Rock. Back in the day, they lowered wagons down to cross the Colorado River at the bottom. I will do a video series on this fascinating historical event. His most notorious event with the Bronco was when he tried to cross a creek in Utah and sunk it in quicksand. This is when his CB handle would officially be changed from yellow jacket to yellow submarine. When I was old enough, I of course wanted to be just like my dad. I purchased my first Jeep during my senior year of high school. It was a 1976 CJ5. It had an AMC 360 engine and a turbo 400 automatic transmission. This was my dream vehicle, and I babied that Jeep. My mom wasn't too happy when I ordered a Holley fuel injection system for the Jeep, but ultimately didn't have a way to pay for it. So she had to. It was a necessity, however, as the four barrel quadrajet carburetor would not allow the engine to stay running on steep angles. That Jeep actually kept me out of trouble in those early years. I was fortunate in that my parents did not smoke, drink, or do drugs. Not being around it, I had no desire to partake in it myself. Instead, me and my friends were out in the canyon four-wheeling almost every night. I still tell people to this day, and it's true, I knew this canyon better at night than during the day. I'd come out here during the day and get lost. 
My brother had an old style Ford Bronco. We called Plum Crazy and we had a blast four wheeling together. After high school, I began college at the local facility, San Juan College in Farmington, New Mexico. It didn't take me long to realize I didn't want to be an accountant, so I enrolled in the T10 vocational program. T10 is an acronym for the Toyota Technical Education Network. I graduated from this two-year program, made plans to get married, and started my career. I didn't last long at the Toyota dealership, however, as being a technician was not what I ultimately wanted to do for a living. But I learned a valuable trade and acquired a fair amount of tools. This served me well for what would soon be the next chapter of my life. Shortly after getting married and growing tired of my CJ5 breaking down all the time, I went down to the local dealership and ordered me a Jeep from the factory exactly the way I wanted it. In short order, it had a lift, wheels and tires, lockers, gears, bumpers front and rear, nerf bars, you know, all the stuff. I had not only become a member of the Cliffhangers Four Wheel Drive Club myself, but I had been elected president. During this same time, Chokecherry Canyon was being featured in magazines and being touted as the new off-road mecca for hardcore off-roading. Enthusiasts would come from all over at different times of the year and us club members would take them out. Harold Off was a huge ambassador for the sport and the reason that a lot of the big dogs were coming to town. These were names like Frank and John Curry, Joel Randall, Rich Hudson, Rod Pepper, Pat Gamillion, just to name a few. I looked up to these guys and was thrilled to get to know them and wheel with them. Because I had the opportunity to be out four wheeling all the time, I was learning the capabilities of my Jeep and becoming a more accomplished driver. These rigs and drivers were coming in from all over and even if they were built up better than mine, I was managing to keep up.
Now for the next chapter of my life. Alicia and Logan had other obligations today, so they rode back out to the entrance of the canyon with Lane and Marcia. So it'll just be me for the rest of this video. I'll put my Jeep Dad hat on for the rest of this, as at this point, I was beginning to have children. In 1999, the American Rock Crawlers Association, ARCA, announced they would have the first ever rock crawling competition right here in Farmington, New Mexico. Knowing I had been wheeling with some of the best of the best, I decided to enter. Now this would never have been possible without the mechanical knowledge and tools acquired during the Toyota program. Before the Farmington competition could ever take place, it had turned into a series, bleeding over into the next year, with additional competitions taking place at other locations around the Southwest. The first initial competitions my father spotted for me, and then my brother took over the spotting duties. We formed a cohesive team and named ourselves Team Sisson Motorsports. We did okay, but could never seem to put back-to-back -to -back days together in these two-day events. We would do really well one day, but have issues on the other day. It really came down to we were competing against teams who had more money and resources than we did. In 2001, we went to our first SEMA show in Las Vegas, Nevada. Here, we successfully secured our very first industry sponsors and partnerships. Also around this same time, the sanctioning bodies of these events began to offer different classes, set to rules regarding the build of the vehicles competing. My brother Matt and I took advantage of this opportunity and began competing in the stock modified and legend classes of U-Rock and Pro-Rock. With the playing field more evenly matched, we began to do very well. The first couple years, we won several events and placed in the top three in each of the series we competed. In 2003, ARCA, now RCAA, the Rock Crawlers Association of America, announced they would have a stock modified class for the first time. In this year's series, called the Goodyear Skyjacker Extreme Rock Crawling Nationals, my brother and I won the Moab event and the entire series, becoming national champions in our class. By this time, we had been very fortunate in securing multiple product sponsorships. Alcoa Wheels had not only sponsored our team, but had become an event sponsor for the entire series as well. They were delighted to have one of their sponsored teams win the championship, and thus we were invited to display our vehicle in their booth at the SEMA show that year. Now, prior to the next season beginning, it was determined that a classification of pro and semi-pro drivers needed to be established. The point system was utilized based on how each driver and team placed in each series or event the year prior to determine eligibility similar to power rankings in professional football. Drivers and teams not meeting the threshold would have to compete as semi-pro and then try to qualify over the following year to achieve pro status. 2003 was without question our best year. We won the ARCA series, placed second at the UROC series, finished in the top three in the Pro Rock series, and finished third at the Super Crawl in St. George, Utah that year. This ultimately had our team ranked number one going into the 2004 season. Now something I had failed to mention earlier is during the 2003 season, I had been let go from my full-time job and I had decided to pursue professional rock crawling as a career. This would prove to be disastrous for many reasons, but I will get into more of those details shortly. The 2004 season started off where the 2003 season left off in St. George, Utah. ARCA and UROC had decided to merge and the sport was exploding. Many teams we competed against had built new rigs over the winter, but we had not. We won the first event, but only because it was shortened due to weather. We had gotten extremely lucky. 
At a Pro Rock event that year in Farmington, we ended up totaling our vehicle on an obstacle. My brother Matt was driving the event and fortunately he was okay, although I know he still feels that crash in his back to this very day. This basically forced us to build a new rig overnight. This was good because up until this point, it had been the equivalent of taking a knife to a gunfight. We were no longer competitive. In what turned out to be one of the most incredible experiences of my life, we rebuilt our crawler in eight days. Now this was only possible because many amazing people stepped up to help us. Joe and RJ Brown had their own shop at the time and were our fabrication sponsor. All the work took place at their shop in and around their normal business and of course many late nights and weekend hours. Friends and even fellow competitors showed up in droves to lend a hand. Joseph Sweezow, a competitor with the Rock Runner Racing and Twisted Custom teams, came all the way down from South Dakota and lived in his motorhome next to the shop to help with the rebuild. We showed up at the next U-Rock event in Cedar City, Utah and surprised everyone. We finished that year struggling significantly along the way. Even with our struggles, however, we were still asked to display our vehicle at the Ramsey Winch booth at the SEMA show that year. In 2005, we secured two marquee sponsorships, Skyjacker Suspension and Alcoa Wheels, which provided financially and not just product sponsorships. This should have been our best year ever, but the wheels were quickly coming off, as I alluded to earlier. Ever since making the decision to have professional rock crawling be my full-time job, we never performed as well at the events. Showing up and having to place in the top three because that was our paycheck proved catastrophic. The reason we did so well before is we were just showing up to have fun. There was no pressure. My brother and I got crossways over how sponsorship money was being spent and went our separate ways, forcing me to find a fill-in spotter for all future events. The main issue is I was making extremely poor life decisions, which would ultimately end my first marriage and seriously damage the relationship with my three amazing children from that marriage. I managed to muddle my way through that season, but struggled mightily trying to do everything on my own. The Supercrawl event that year was held the week before SEMA as a man-made course was constructed in the parking lot of the Las Vegas Convention Center. I did horrible at that event without my brother. The only real highlight to that event was Chip Foos ended up welding my aluminum hydraulic steering ram back together at 2 o'clock in the morning. 2006 went much like the end of 2005. I had extremely poor showings at each event and wasn't even able to finish several of them. My last competition ever was the Supercrawl event at Firebird Raceway in Phoenix, Arizona, the end of 2006. In early 2007, UROC announced they were no longer going to hold rock crawling events, instead focusing in the new direction the sport was going, rock racing. My poor rig was wore out and wasn't going to race anyone. So I sold my vehicle in the spring of 2007 with the expectation of building a rock racer, but my poor life choices had finally caught up with me and I lost everything. Now living with my mother and stepfather, I met Alicia around Thanksgiving 2008. We got married in September of 2009 and had Logan in October 2012. The first 10 years of our marriage were very strained and extremely challenging. 
We actually separated for about six months towards the end of 2018 and beginning of 2019. I had us living well above our means at one point, and again, we lost everything. Now, let me explain why I'm being so transparent. I now know the reason for all my many struggles for all these years and why. The reason I lost everything in life, not once but twice, is I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. I was a sinner in need of a savior. He forgave me, taught me how to forgive myself and how to forgive others. He instilled a desire to live for him by loving my family and friends in a transformative new way. Alicia and I were given the miracle of a restored marriage and celebrated a wedding anniversary this past September. We also established a strong network of friends, a lot of whom which you've seen on this channel. This community has proven invaluable. God's plan and purpose began to become more clear to us in 2021 when I was promoted to general manager of the Mack and Volvo Class 8 truck dealership I worked for called Bruckner Truck and Equipment. This ultimately afforded us the opportunity for Alicia to quit her job and homeschool Logan. Bruckner's is a fantastic company to work for with the owners promoting Christian values. I also continued to grow as an individual, being thrust into a position of management and leadership. My main reason for this complete transformation, however, is Alicia. This woman stood by me, encourages me, and supports me. She is my rock and keeps me accountable, always gently pushing me to be closer with the Lord. Through all of these life-changing transformations, I have rebuilt relationships with my brother, all of my boys, and have the ultimate joy of getting to be a part of my granddaughter's life. God is truly good. I also need to acknowledge my mother and stepfather, as they have always supported me and keep me focused on what truly matters. So that is the short version of my story, believe it or not. If you're still watching, you may be asking yourself, okay, great. How does this all tie into your YouTube channel? Well, plain and simple, this channel is now our walk of faith. So how is our channel possible and financially feasible? God blessing me with my GM position at Bruckner's provided the monetary means for us to have this opportunity. So how did the channel get started? Well, as I have mentioned in other videos, my father is the reason we started the channel. He had a stroke in 2007 and could no longer join us on our adventures. I wanted him to be a part, so I started filming our adventures and putting them up on YouTube as an easy way for him to view them. After making and uploading videos for a while, it became something I really enjoyed. Alicia and I put a plan together to where I could pursue this passion full time, so in the middle of October, I left Bruckner's while Alicia went back to work full time so we could have health insurance. You may have noticed the uptick in our video releases. So many doors open to make this a reality, we feel like to not pursue this at this point would be unfaithful. So here we are, and you get to come along on our journey. We plan to continue bringing you the best content possible. As of right now, the channel is 100% self-funded. We are not yet monetized, we don't have a Patreon account, and we do not currently have any sponsors. This means any place we go to explore is where we want to go. Any product we use that's featured on the channel is something we truly believe in and use it because it simply works. Hopefully you find that useful and refreshing. Our vision for the future is to eventually become monetized and have a Patreon subscription available. I'm also working on a website so we can offer merchandise. Right now, however, we are just focused on having fun and building the channel. We do hope someday to have sponsors by building programs via affiliate marketing. 
This way, you all can benefit from the products we use and have proven useful and reliable, while receiving discounts for purchasing these same products yourselves, utilizing our offer codes. We may even, at some point, do product reviews and or product installation videos. Our biggest immediate need is an engine solution for our JK, so we can get it back in action. Fortunately, Lane and Marsha are retired and so far enjoy being a part of our crazy adventures and the channel. They are extremely knowledgeable and experienced as well. We are so thankful for them and really enjoy spending time together. We hope to bring you amazing adventures with out of this world scenery and landscapes. We don't take ourselves too serious and neither should you. Have fun, smile and laugh a lot. Perhaps we give you ideas of places to check out for yourselves, or maybe you are in the same similar situation to my father before he passed and you just want to enjoy our expeditions from the comfort of your own home or phone. We want to always remain humble and be good ambassadors for off-roading, overlanding, camping, hiking, just the overall use of our always endangered public lands. Hopefully this video has provided some meat and potatoes behind who we are and what we believe. We want you to have confidence in our abilities and trust that we always have the best intentions. Most of all, we want to give glory to God and praise His name for allowing us the opportunity to get out into this beautiful world He has created and enjoy it. Thanks for watching.